the FNL Network talk show. Hi, welcome to another episode of the FNL Network talk show. I'm your host, Diana Jevia. This is a really special episode of the show because we are celebrating all things Christmas. I'm here with my co-hosts. I would say they're my elves, but let's be real. I'm the shortest one <laughs> out of everyone, probably. So say hello to Marianne and Kat. Thank you guys so much for hanging out tonight. Oh, it's a pleasure. Absolute pleasure to be here. <laughs> Great to be here with you, Diana. Yeah, and I love like a girl's chat. And I just want to say everyone at home who's watching us, if you are wrapping gifts right now, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just got to cover the gifts. That's like what my <laughs> mantra when I wrap the gifts. <laughs> uh, Don't right. wrap them. Don't wrap them. <laughs> just hand them to someone. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm with you on that too, Kat. Like, here you go. It's the thought. <laughs> Make life easy, you know? I mean, yeah, I thought one lot of stuff and it's just being delivered by Amazon and they're just getting it straight from Amazon. Oh, I love that. And you know what? There is an option on Amazon that you can put it in a bag. Yeah, um, there is. <laughs> there is. Yep. We do that at work. We have like secret Santa and we'll Amazon the gifts yeah. to the house and we put it in a bag. Like we check off, put it in a bag. So, <laughs> um, all right. Well, we have a lot of Christmassy holiday stuff to discuss today. We are getting into all aspects, so buckle up. Let's get started. Um, Mary Ann, I know you wanted to talk about the holidays and inclusion. Yes. So my question for you guys is how do you think we can make the holidays more inclusive? And by that, I mean at school, at the workplace, and even thinking about other groups that may be marginalized in our society, how can we bring everyone together? What are your thoughts on how we can make it more inclusive? I think that's a really good question because I feel like so many people want to put out, there is a war on Christmas. There is a war mm -hmm. on Christmas. Like people don't say Merry Christmas. And I disagree because, and I'm, I'm Catholic by mm -hmm. birth. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> but, uh, I celebrate Christmas and I feel like there's no war on Christmas. How can you have a war on something that's commercially everywhere like mm -hmm. it's the predominant holiday in the U.S. and when I grew up um, I grew up in the 90s and I went to school in Staten Island New York which is a borough of New York City and we were taught about all the holidays so we learned about Christmas we learned about Hanukkah Kwanzaa um, Las Posadas um, there was a Swedish one I think it's Santa Lucia um, St. Luke, whatever it's called, like, yeah, but the, but they were the candles. And if you ever had the American <laughs> girl doll, Kirsten she yeah. for that. Yes. So we learned about all the holidays and I just think that's really beautiful. And I think it's up to our generation to bring the inclusivity into the office. So, you know, don't brand it as a Christmas party, brand it as a holiday party. And on that same note, if someone wishes you a happy Christmas, it's also not the end of the world. Because if someone were going to wish me a happy Hanukkah, I'd be like, oh, hey, thanks. You took time out of your day to say something nice to me. Yeah. I think it's just being tolerant and respectful of everyone and just having a kind heart. Absolutely. <laughs> what about you, Kat? What do you think? Um, well, I went to a school and there was, it was quite diverse. Obviously, there's, there was Church of England, there was Catholic, we had Hindu, we had um, Muslim, and we learned about the different religions and we respected the different individual holidays for those religions. And we learned about the different foods and everything else. And I think a great way with younger people, try the different foods, you know? Like, for example, I... I have no clue because we didn't have a, a Jewish community where I grew up. So I have no idea about Hanukkah really. I don't really know much about the different foods, but I think, you know, our senses, we have taste, touch, smell, sight, get different decorations out, you know, smell the different smells, you know, you know, for, I don't know, cooking, some people have cinnamon, the Jewish community mm -hmm. might use something else. Muslim people might use other stuff get, you know, taste, touch, everything involved. And I think that it shouldn't just be about tinsel and baubles. It should mm -hmm. celebrate everything. And I think at school, you know, have the, the Hanukkah candles, you mm -hmm. know, just the kids should celebrate the different days. And you could have like a festive week where you celebrate Hanukkah one day and you 
do artwork that's Hanukkah related. You have the candles, you do the taste different foods that way. Another day you do Christian, like Christmas and stuff like that, but you also learn about the Catholic side of it because mm -hmm. obviously the beliefs are slightly different. You know, if like for me, I was from a, there was quite a big Indian community. So the Muslim side of it, I'm Mormon even. I think Mormon people don't even celebrate. Learn about their history. I think it is yeah. about educating yourself. And I think with young kids and growing up in school, make it exciting. Make it about the different activities people do. Play games. Um, very much food. It's a massive sensory thing. And make it a party thing. Like later on in life, it shouldn't be, you know, like for example, I don't celebrate Christmas, but it doesn't mean that I don't want you to celebrate Christmas or you to celebrate Hanukkah. It's embracing and accepting everybody for what they want to do. And I think, I think different beliefs and different traditions and different celebrations, it's such a beautiful thing. And I think it's about educating ourselves and participating. For example, if someone wants me to come and help do a last minute Christmas tree, I'm there with the tinsel and the baubles, happy to help. Um, I would love to learn more about Hanukkah because I don't really understand it, which kind of makes me seem a bit ignorant to be honest, but I never had it in my world. And I just think it is, it's about embracing people, loving the differences in people and just celebrating it. And I think, Inclusivity, it's so important. It's important in every single area of our life. And it's important every single day of the year, not just during the holidays, but yeah, embrace it, teach it, um, use the foods, use the different parties and just get to learn about each other. Cause as people, we are beautiful and we're mm. so diverse and it should be celebrated. I just want to say on the note about food and you not knowing much about Hanukkah, you need to eat a potato latke. Those things are banging. Like, oh, oh my God. My potatoes. In Staten Island, <laughs> like, I would go over, I was going over from Ariel's for latkes. They are banging. <laughs> oh, man. Are they like potato fritters? Yeah, pretty much. They call it, it's like a potato pancake. I don't really, I, everyone I've had is made a little differently, but they're so delicious. Like I could eat 12 of them. You probably shouldn't eat 12 of them, but I, I could. Hey, it's <laughs> and we can eat what we like for a few weeks of the year, right? Yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. So I love that. I do love that. <laughs> and I definitely have to taste it for sure. Follow up, taste it and follow up. Oh yeah. Potato, you have me a potato. Um, I think both of you ladies, I agree with both of you so much. I think the holidays, like you were saying, Diana, I think that if somebody wishes you a Merry Christmas, just say thank you. If somebody says happy holidays, you can say thank you. It's, it's not about well, why don't you say it this way or why don't you say that? I think it's about kindness. It's about treating people with respect and wanting to see other people happy. Um, it's not all about, you know, our own selfish wants and needs. If the holidays are truly about giving, then why don't we give? Um, and I think part of that is giving kindness to others by kind words. And it doesn't matter if it's not the exact wording, you know, I think people put way too much focus on, well, you have to say Merry Christmas. You can't say happy holidays. Well, Happy holidays is not negative, you know? Right. Um, and I absolutely agree about the inclusion in schools. I, I grew up in the 90s as well. I think I'm older than you though. Um, <laughs> but um, when I was in elementary school, I even remember a chorus teacher. She had a song about Hanukkah and I can still sing it to this day. I won't. <laughs> but I, I think I remember what you're talking about too we'll have to sing it off camera so we don't like hurt anyone's eardrums is it about dreidel spinning candles burning table yes. set and friends returning ah yeah, yeah that's no, it you guys need to sing this for me I have no right. this song Diana are you ready no yes. I'm not singing dreidel spinning candles burning table set and friends returning is that how it goes yes I'm just doing the background dancing because yeah. we're not getting no singing out of me. Love I don't want to lose our audience. Ah, that's okay. I, my filter went away years ago. <laughs> 
so that's, you know, that was a positive memory for me of when I was younger. And my chorus teacher, she, we sang all different, we sang about Kwanzaa, we sang about all kinds of different holidays. It didn't hurt me. It educated me and it helped me at the age of 10 to be more inclusive to those other kids that I was going to school with. Um, and I see all kinds of negativity living in the South in North Carolina. I see it all. Um, I see a lot of judgment. I see a lot of cruelty. I see a lot of people who say that they want to live a life of kindness to others. And they believe that you should only say Merry Christmas, but their actions to other people are despicable. Their judgment and their criticism of people that may live differently than they are is disgusting. And I can't get behind that. Um, I think that you have to, you know, you have to mean it when you say that you want to be kind to a person. It's not always just in your words, it's in your actions. So holidays and kindness, I think it can go all year round. Um, and another big thing for me, I think as far as being inclusive, there are people that are marginalized, that are shunned, that are alone. And I think one of the things that is important is not to forget those people. If you know somebody that doesn't have family, if you know somebody that's depressed, if you know somebody that just lost a spouse, maybe include them in your get togethers if you do celebrate, um, or maybe stop by their house, um, bring them a meal. Something as simple as letting somebody know that you don't forget about them during that holiday season could make or break them because we never know what somebody else is struggling with. There are so many suicides, so many negative thoughts and sadness around this time of year. And so I think a big part of being inclusive is reaching out to the people that everybody else kind of forgets. You know, that's something that as I've gotten older, I've tried to be a little bit more mindful of because I know that if, if I was in that situation and I was lonely, I would want somebody to reach out to me and let me know, hey, you're not alone, you're still loved. So I think that is, is a huge part of what Christmas or holidays should be about is bringing people together, not hatred, but love. All beautiful, beautiful points, Marianne. Thank you so much. And I know Kat uh, wanted to bring up, she wanted to go a little bit further into what you left off on and people who are alone for the holidays or might not celebrate the holidays in the way that everyone else does. So take it away, Kat. Okay, so someone close to my heart once said, Christmas isn't a day of celebration. It is a day that I suffer. And this, with that, it, it's got a lot of weight to it. There are so many people out there. Their marriages are broken down. You know, people have died. They're struggling financially. There's addiction within the family. There's people that are alone. Like Marianne just said, depression rises at the time of year. It's the highest time of year for suicide. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people out there really struggling that don't want to know about the holidays, don't want to celebrate. It is the most depressing time of the year. And my question for you guys is, do you have any advice to try and make the holiday period more bearable for these people? Um, are there any activities that you would suggest that aren't festive that they can go and do and they can go and do alone? You know, how are you going to make this a better better time for them. You know, what would you say to them? Because a lot of people, you can say, come to my house, you know, there'll be a, a, a chair for you, a plate for you, and they don't want to know because they feel they're intruding. And it is so, so difficult for so many people. Um, and I'm going to say, I don't celebrate for a reason. And like Christmas doesn't exist to me. Um, and I'm going to come back to all that later. I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to start with you, Diana. Yeah, um, I think doing something for yourself, as you mentioned, is a really good way of kind of getting away from the holiday. Because like you said, uh, people don't want to go to other people's homes because they feel like they're intruding. I know someone who said the same exact thing. So instead of celebrating this year, they're going to go on a trip and go skiing which I think if you can afford it and you can treat yourself and take yourself on a vacation or take yourself, 
put you in the island somewhere, like absolutely go for it. And it's hard, right? Because Christmas and the holidays, they're all around us. You go to the mall, everything's decorated. You turn on the TV, there's a thousand Christmas commercials. So maybe, I don't know, go on a streaming service and where you can kind of choose everything you want to watch and just make it really personalized and custom to you. And maybe if there's like a support group, I don't know, there's Facebook groups for everything now, like everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like somewhere in the world, there has to be a Facebook group that exists for grief around this time of year. So maybe you can make friends with those people and get together and just not even do a holiday thing. Like, I don't know, ordering pizza and watch a movie or something, or just building up another support system in a different way that isn't just constantly having Santa shoved down your throat. Yeah. Yeah. I think they are, they are really good ideas. I'm going to say that sometimes the support system can have a negative effect because it's a lot of people going through the same thing Mm -hmm. and it starts to kind of spiral. People spiral each other. And I mean, for some people it works really well, for others it doesn't. Yeah. I'm gonna say for for me personally, I have to just say for a long time, Christmas was so negative for me. It was the most depressing time of the year. I'd spend basically two weeks in floods of tears, feeling so alone, so rejected, everything else. And then I chose to own it. And Christmas no longer existed for me. I gave that day no power. The holidays have no power over me. And when I made that conscious decision to say the holidays have no power, it's just another day of the year cap. I made it positive. And I used to go hiking every, well, every Christmas for a massive long hike with my dog. And we'd spend the day together and it was beautiful. And we took pictures. And the only festive thing I did was wrap some presents for her purely because she loved tearing the paper off. (laughs) Well, this year, as you know, she's not here. And I'm gonna teach myself to roller skate because I wanna learn and it's fun and it's something different. And I don't mind being alone. I really don't mind being alone. In fact, I prefer it. The day has no power over me. I'm happy just to, be me myself and I and try new things do fun things go to go to the beach you know get on a bike feel the wind in your hair appreciate the day just you know it's Sunday Sunday might be Christmas day but it is just another Sunday and Mm -hmm. once you take the power away from it being a holiday and you take the fact the feelings that you have to be with family and it has to be all tinsel and baubles and laughter and carols and uh silly jumpers I think it can be great and it can be amazing and it can be about you and it can be about self-care and for Mm. me that was that was my ticket that was my ticket to positivity I took the power away and I want to ask um where are you going to go rollerblading are you going to go like on the beach or start somewhere maybe a little safer that like not as many things going on okay considering um I was booked to be on a, a roller ring a couple of months ago for like a production and I get there and I was thinking yeah I can go forwards well I about took out the main cast member just as we were going <laughs> and then they like pulled me off and they like put me at the side they're like you can just dance at the side <laughs> and I was like oh no. I have my roller skates which I bought over there because that was like the catalyst I did find it fun between takes I was off skating around on the, mm. the roller ring and I had a blast but between takes because they didn't think I was very safe and I think we have like where I live there's 300 apartments so we've got a big parking complex which is really decent not gravelly Mm. I think I'm going to start going around there. My car is out of action at the moment. So getting to the beach is a no-no. Yeah. But um, <laughs> like my gearbox is gone. It's stuck. So um, I'm going to like teach myself around like the car park area because it is a big car park. And then I'm going to go onto the streets locally and just see it, but see it from wheels. And yeah. I mean, everyone knows that, you know, I used to have a horse, I'm used to having wind in my hair, I'm used to having adrenaline, and I am super pumped for this. By the time we get to New Year, I'm going to be a pro and I'm going to be going backwards. Although I do hear <laughs> you need to use your butt to, to get the backwards movement. Yeah. But everyone knows yeah. 
I don't have a butt, so how that's going to work? We'll have, we'll have to like. Um, that might be how you get us. your butt, you know? That might be the thing that sculpts you. So, <laughs> wiggling away and hope I go backwards, but I'm I'm super excited for it. I really am. Yeah. It's just different. It's something new. It's something childish. It's something carefree. And hey, the worst that can happen is I end up in A and E, right? <laughs> oh god god forbid i think that's great yeah so i yeah. mean that's that's my my advice to people take the power away do something fun do something different that you might not do the rest of the year you know um, i think that's great make it about laughter make it about being a child again it doesn't you yeah, know there's no christmas decorations involved in my life and i'm going to have a blast so, and I understand, you know, there's um, a lot going on with my family in the UK at the moment. And it's, it is very negative. And people know my sister's a drug addict and stuff. Well, yeah, I've been, today there's been police involvement, everything else, you name it. But it is, it's about separating yourself from that and just mm -hmm. having a good time, having a good time. I agree. Um, I think that's, I think that's spot on. I think holidays, Christmas, whatever you call it, is so personal. And I think your idea is fantastic, Kat. I think it's great that you are wanting to learn a new skill slash hobby. And it gives you something to look forward to. And all of us have negativity in our lives. And everyone, everyone's situation is so unique. It's, you know, nobody can say, I know how this person or that person feels. So I think it is very unique and individual for each person. I do think as cliche as self-care sounds, I think it's important. I think, um, you know, learning a new skill is a great idea or doing something that you already know how to do that you love, like maybe painting um, or like Diana said, find a streaming service so that you don't have to see holiday stuff. Because as we all know, the Hallmark Channel and everything is just Christmas all over the place, you know, and that you can't get away from it. It's on billboards. It's everywhere. Um, but that self-care and that self-protection for those that aren't as enthusiastic about the holidays, I think is huge. You know, take a hot bubble bath, meditate. And some people, they like to be alone. Like you said, Kat, they don't feel like they want to be in a crowd or they don't want to feel like they're intruding, even though they, I'm sure that they're not. Um, you know, it's sometimes better for them to be alone. Some people really do enjoy it. I find that a lot of times I like to be alone with my animals, but you know, it's, it's kind of like peace. Um, we're going to have so much social stuff going on this year. I kind of, I told my husband, I said, I kind of just crave some quiet peace, just doing nothing at home and just relaxing because the hustle and bustle can make you so exhausted. And I think it, taking care of our physical body is important during the holidays, but also our, our spirit, our mind, and keeping away from anything that's going to threaten that peace. So if being around a, a group or a big celebration is not gonna be good for our mental health, then by all means, I think we should stay home and be alone and do what we enjoy. And nobody should judge us for it. No, exactly. And I have this, this policy, which it took my family members a long time to come to terms with. Um, I don't really give presents. So I, I did, you know, I ordered something via Amazon, but it wasn't from me. I got on the phone to my nephew and I he went on Amazon in the UK and I was on Amazon here and he chose gifts for my parents because my parents are, they bring him up and then I obviously pay for them. So that was my, my Christmas shopping was so he could give gifts. Um, but what I'm going to say, you know, for me personally, back to my thing, I, I have this thing, no presents. I don't want to mm -hmm. know, no presents. And nobody even says happy Christmas to me now because I found that as soon as, I didn't give the day power. People stopped making me rethink about it. I could have the best time and I could really, you know, just enjoy it. And my family are great now. You know, they all do gifts and they all do their Christmas meal and they know that I'm not going to call them on Christmas day. Um, and it's accepted now. They accept that this is what I have to do. 
And I think it is, you know, if you've got someone who is struggling at this time of year and perhaps they just don't want to know about the holidays, give them a just because gift after or before, not actually make it, it's a Christmas gift. Um, you know, just take the pressure away of it being something you have to do mm -hmm. that give gifts at Christmas. So it doesn't, you know, make them think, you know, I'm on my own. I'm opening a gift on Christmas and it's just me, myself and I. Um, and talking about that, I want to ask you guys, because a lot of people are struggling financially right now. We all know that everyone's been hit with inflation, COVID and everything else. And there's last minute Christmas shopping that people need to do. A lot of people don't want to go to a relative or a friend without something. I want to know if you guys have any ideas of a cheap sentimental gift or a personal handmade gift that would mean a lot to you if you got given it that you could suggest to our viewers. Yeah. I cross stitch, which I've brought up on the show, Ooh. which honestly, I'm not even just saying this because I do it. If someone gives you a cross stitched gift, that is like way more effort than mm -hmm. going to the store and buying someone something and you can personalize it for them. And it's so affordable. I go on Etsy and the patterns are maybe like three bucks to download and you could buy the cloth at Michael's and all the yarn you need for under 20 bucks and you can make multiple gifts with all those supplies but um I made this wasn't for Christmas I sent it out for Halloween because my friend my best friend and I are big on Halloween and I made her ghost face from scream with the phone and it says no you hang up first and I mailed it to her <laughs> she thought it was the best thing ever you oh. frame it and just like handmade gifts like that, that show, okay, you took the time to think of a mm -hmm. pattern someone would like, and you took painstaking hours, literally just going like this for hours and ripping things out when you realize you missed one stitch and poking yourself with a needle. <laughs> like all that stuff goes a lot further than just going to the store and buying someone something. Yeah, I think that's beautiful. It really is. I mean, I'm gonna say a couple of my favorite gifts I got given 15 years ago and they were mats for my dog and they were handmade by my mum um, oh. in my favourite colours and I still have them out even though my dog's passed. My mum's like, you know, you can get rid of them if they're sentimental but I was like, no, they'll go to my, my next one because one, they were made with love and two, they still look amazing 15 years on and they meant the world to me. They're the best thing I ever got given. So homemade is definitely amazing. Marianne. I have a, a gift that I love to make people and I call them and I call it an encouragement box. So I love to paint and I will get a wooden box and I will paint that box with specific colors, designs, or pictures that suit the person I'm giving it to. And on the inside of the box, I will write down sayings and encouragements and I'll fold them all up and I'll close it up and I'll give them a box. And then I write a little paper to go with it. And I say, here are your instructions. When you have a bad day, open this box and pull out a saying to make you feel better, to bring you encouragement. And I tailor each one to the person I give it to. Like I made my bonus daughter one years ago and, and it's still in her room. And, um, you know, I've made them for family. I've made them for friends. And I just, I love it. Um, and like Diana was saying, giving somebody something that you put effort into, you think of, you know, you put thought into it, you put time into it. It may not cost a lot of money, but to me, something like that is more meaningful than if somebody bought me a hundred dollar gift or a $200 gift, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably my top favorite. And then I also love to just paint and I've made paintings for friends and family a lot. And they seem to really appreciate those as well. So those are probably my top two of homemade gifts that I love to give. That's, That's so cute. cute. It <laughs> is. And it's amazing that you said about your, you know, your gift where you painted and you had the, the bits of paper in a box. Because mm -hmm. one of the things I was thinking I would love is since my, my horse and my dog died, I do get lonely. And I would like a promise jar. Just with like 12, 12 pieces of paper in it. And it would be, I don't have really any spare money at the moment. So it would be, for example, if a friend gave me the promise jar, it would be like, um, 
hike in Griffith Park. Let's go to the beach. Um, go around a museum because museums are often cheap. Rummage through thrift stores, mm -hmm. and there'll be twelve things, and it would be so that we met once a month at least. You know, and I think that would be lovely. Yeah. Um, just just so you know that you're going to have company and you're going to see a friend one day of every month. I just think this promise jar of just activities you can do because you're building memories with your friend, but also it's, you know, if you are feeling lonely, you're like, oh, I've got this in two weeks time. You yeah. Know, I have felt so lonely since I lost my, my two beings. And I was thinking about that last night and I was thinking, you know what, if I was to get one thing, it would be the promise jar. And the other thing that I think is great, because I've started really liking baking bread, and I think it's because I get to punch it and knead it. <laughs> it gets the, the, the angst out, you know? And I have two beautiful neighbors, um, a couple, like a couple of doors down. And so I'm gonna make them some bread tomorrow and just take it mm. around. Because nice. they, like, they actually, I bumped into them yesterday and they kind of said to me, you know, if you want to come around, sit on our bed, watch TV for us, there'll be a plate there for you. And it was just super nice. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to bake you some bread because I love baking bread at the moment. And just a little handmade, homemade gesture like that. Or yeah. a pie. I just think that's, you know, the homemade doesn't need to cost you much. It's a great way to do a last minute gift for someone. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. Is one of like the most like meaningful ways you can tell someone you care yeah. about them. Yeah, I, I agree. So yeah, for me, it's the promise jar and it is uh, bake something, go out there, bake something. Doesn't cost you that. And you know, yeah. then you have to take and you've got, you feel, you know, it takes any shame or embarrassment away that you might not have been able to buy something and it stops you from racking up credit card debt. Mm. So I think that's yeah. good. Yeah, so, that's really beautiful. You still beautiful. need to buy Christmas gifts. That is the way we're going. Homemade people. Love so. that. Um, okay, so I want to round everything out by talking about your Christmas morning traditions because I was in one of the 8 million Facebook groups I belong in and one of them is literally like, we like to take polls. That's literally the whole purpose of the group. And one of the polls was on Christmas morning, do you open presents first or do you eat breakfast first and it was so interesting to see everyone's different way they handle things like one girl god bless her willpower she's like no like I clean and then I eat breakfast and then like we watch the <laughs> and then we all I'm like what the hell <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you oh, god bless you but in my family like it was always wake up presence when I was young I was an only child for eight years then when my brother came around it's like all right we had to wait for Joey to get up and like me you know as you get older going into your parents room to wake him up becomes less and less cute so <laughs> I had to wait and now it's kind of the opposite my brother's like in bed it's nine o'clock he's been in bed since like eight o'clock he's like a 22 year old 80 year old man and he'll be up at six o'clock and then he's got to wait for me who had been drinking the night before at Christmas Eve <laughs> <laughs> and wake up <laughs> <laughs> and then once the whole family is up, we're allowed to go downstairs. We open our gifts. We usually do breakfast after, but because I can't function without my coffee, I'll have like a little coffee by my gifts. Same. And yeah, we open gifts. Then it's breakfast. I usually sneak a Christmas cookie and get yelled at by my mom because they're for company. <laughs> and then I watch the Disney yeah. parade and it's a grand old day. <laughs> What do you guys like to do? Marianne, was that, what was like the order of traditions or gift so, opening, or whatever? Well, when I was young, when I was a kid, um, first of all, I would sneak down the stairs in the middle of the night because I wanted to see Santa. Mm. I wanted to see Santa and I would just peek around the corner and there'd be nobody there. I'm like, crap, because I really wanted to meet Santa. I don't blame you. <laughs> I wanted to meet Santa. So I would sneak down the stairs and nobody there because I'd leave the cookies and the milk. And um, but when I got up in the morning, I would just run down the stairs. And usually I would beat my brother because Joey, he's also named Joey. But he's four, yeah, he's four years older than me. Mm -hmm. And he would sleep even later. I'd usually get up pretty early. Like we're talking six or seven in the morning when I was young because I was ready to open my present. I wanted to see what Santa brought. 
So I would go downstairs and my parents would usually be up and they'd be drinking their coffee. I would not eat anything. I would be tearing into those presents, tearing into the presents. Sometimes they would say, well, you need to wait for your brother. And I would not like that at all. Um, but that, that is what my childhood tradition was. Um, and then afterwards, my mom would do like a big breakfast, cinnamon rolls, eggs, bacon, everything. Now it's more about, um, my husband has a daughter, she's 15. Um, and she is just the sweetest thing. Um, when she's with us on Christmas, usually we do presents first. Um, and then my husband and I, we actually don't really do a lot of gifts for each other. Um, our gift is just, an ex we, we went on a trip, we had an experience. Um, neither one of us feel the need to give like anything material. We're just really relaxed and laid back and just, we've got what we need. We're happy to give Emery a good Christmas. So I know that probably sounds crazy to some people, but we're content. We're just content with, yeah. you know, we just don't really need anything. Um, so what we do is once Emery opens her presents, I will make homemade waffles. That is our, that is our thing is homemade waffles. And yeah, she loves chocolate chip waffles. So we'll make that me coffee is a necessity and I have to have it this, the minute I get up out of bed. So by the time I make her breakfast, I've probably had three or four cups. Um, but that is our tradition now. Um, and just me just enjoying the day, enjoying the day with my family, my animals, um we're very simple and I love it that way that's so sweet I love that and especially like as you get older you realize it becomes more about your kids than about mm -hmm. you that's like selfishly one of the reasons I'm happy I'm not married and I don't have kids because like my parents can still take care of me the 30 year old I'm gonna milk that for all it's worth <laughs> enjoy enjoy it I'm 36 almost 37 and enjoy it um, yes. there's definitely no rush. <laughs> I fully plan on it. Now, Kat, I know Christmas looks a little bit different for you, but maybe when you celebrated, or maybe you want to tell us about this year, what it's going to look like. Well, um, I'm going to say as a kid, I remember we used to have a stocking that would suddenly appear on the end of the bed during the night. So Santa obviously came and he had this you know, you put the stocking and I remember this would have like a satsuma, or it would have like a pencil, novelty pencil with like a Christmas tree that bobbled around on a spring yeah. or something. It would have things like socks, uh, a pair of knickers. It would have <laughs> things that you basically needed and your parents were going to buy you anyway. Um, it might have like a coloring book. It had, you know, school supplies or something. Um, anyway, they got wrapped in the they got wrapped and put in the stocking and there was also like chocolate pennies and stuff like that in there mm -hmm. and um so you know as a kid you wake up super early and the parents want to lie in bed so we would tear through the stocking probably eat the satsuma by that time my mum and dad were stirring like my parents one of them was always on call because they were both um doctors at the same medical practice so often mm -hmm. someone would be called out um Breakfast, it was quite simple. It was, I'm guessing just a cup of tea, maybe some toast or cereal and croissant or chocolate croissant to be extravagant, mm. you know? Um, and people would have to wait. Often like my grandparents would be at church or they would have gone to midnight mass or I remember having to be in the choir when I was younger. So sometimes I would have to put my cassock on and sing like, Oh, gals <laughs> were tune in church on Christmas morning and, you know, get back or I would have done it Christmas Eve. Um, I stopped doing that when I was about 10 because I had no belief and it was like forced on me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we would have to wait until my grandparents were ready and they would come down and uh, would open like the stockings and everyone would be there and they would be watching. But this would be like the main gift sort of thing. And my dad would be there with a pen and pencil noting down what everybody had and yeah because thank you letters had to be written That's the cute. side was being like 
the country doctor, you know, the village mentality. The doctor gets a lot of gifts and the kids get a lot of gifts. So this box of chocolate for like Jolly's kids or whatever from Aww. someone you've never heard of. Well, every single one of these people had to have a thank you letter. Mm. So it would all get written down and like the, the gifts from the people we didn't know, it would be like, okay, you write that one, you write that one, you write that one. They got split, but everything else we had to write our own. So yeah, there would always be some writing paper given so that we could write the thank you letters. Um, I remember lunch, it was a big thing. By this time, my cousins had arrived. It happened quite late, it was like two, three. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the women in the kitchen would be there cooking away the turkey and all the trimmings. And there would always be like a, a melon boat or a smoked salmon something rather and then all the things my nana would then be very rude get up from the table whatever <laughs> point in the meal it was and go and watch the queen's christmas speech um, and no one no one could continue no one could continue and then she would come back and you know finish off and there'll be all the, like the crackers and the the little plastic gifts you get in crackers and the the little paper hats and that was, you know, that was pretty much Christmas when I was super young. And then we'd do, the tea would be like basic sandwiches and potato chips or something, you know, um, leftovers, whatever. No one was really hungry, but there was always something. Mm -hmm. uh, getting on teens, I, I really stopped celebrating from 15. Um, mm -hmm. It got... I had eating disorders by this point. My sister was already uh, doing drugs. My, my nana was very vocal one year about me pushing food around the plate because I couldn't manage. And it, it got negative then and it never really recovered. After that, I was, uh, I think my 17th, when me and my mum did, we went to Barbados because it had been such a disaster the year before. And it was great, Barbados was lovely, but my mum was having a breakdown. So that was really difficult for a 17 year old to deal with, but Barbados was lovely. I'm not gonna say the holiday was perfect because it wasn't. And after that, I made sure I had a job. And then from 18 onwards, I was out of the house because my sister had had kids. Um, obviously she was on drugs. So, and it was one of us or the other. So I was always, and I, so I spent them on my own for many, many years. And it was, it was really, really, really rough for a long time until I changed my mentality until I was like, you know what? Doesn't exist, don't give it power and yeah. celebrate whatever. So, I mean, my Christmas right now, I have no idea what it looks like. I'm gonna fly by the seat of my pants um, <laughs> because I have been um, off color since I finished work on early hours Friday morning. If I need to sleep, I'll sleep until midday. I'm then gonna get up. I do my roller skating I'd quite like to try and go for a hike but I haven't been hiking since my dog passed so we'll see how I feel on the day but I'm going to make it good whatever it is um, yeah. very untraditional like I said there's no presents involved the only people I'm making something for is a loaf of bread for my neighbor because they're just they're nice to me they are nice to me yeah and that's, that's nice. it Love um, that. I also, you made me laugh with the book because in the, the Italian tradition, whenever there's a big like communion, sweet 16, even mm -hmm. my baptism, we have what's called the book. And when you open a present, you write down what the book is for thank you cards. But also, so if you have, oh, I don't know, cousin Joe's getting married. Let's look up what he gave you. Okay. We're giving that. <laughs> You might have to adjust for inflation. Oh, wow. My mom still, I think she has like my communion book, my sweet 16 book. And it was so funny because I was mentioning to this to someone in LA. I don't remember. They weren't from New York, but they're like, oh my God, I saw that on Jersey Shore and I thought that was fake. And I'm like, nope, the, the book is very much a thing. <laughs> what? Wow. Oh, my. But yeah, I mean, for thank you letters, I think we were given until New Year's Eve to get them done. So we have like in the UK, we have Boxing Day, which is like a second Christmas day, but it's, mm -hmm. there's no presents or anything. It is, some people do the traditional Christmas dinner again. You know, it's other people go out and it's all about burning off some of the Christmas meal calories and they go for walks or they would go hunting or shooting, you know, like the English countryside sports. Yeah. A lot of them aren't done now. I mean, shooting still does happen. 
hunting's now drag hunting, so no fox is involved. But you know, it's very, it's very traditional now, if you are a country bumpkin like I was, and I was brought up with horses, that you would go on the Boxing Day meet. So you'd have like your squashed up sandwiches in your pocket. You'd get yeah. a bit the at the, the Boxing Day meet and off you would go galloping hedges and you'd come back covered in mud, soaking wet and very cold, but it was great. <laughs> and, you know, so Boxing Day was very much like that. And if I didn't have something to do, you can guarantee Boxing Day, I was there writing my letters getting them all done so they were done and dusted very so. nice it's so interesting hearing about everyone's different traditions especially we're all from different parts of the world so it's mm -hmm. cool to see just how everyone does things a little bit differently and I think that's a great way to wrap up today's show in a bow no pun intended because I always say that <laughs> but I want to thank you guys so much Kat and Marianne for hanging out tonight for this very special Christmas edition holiday edition of the FNL Network talk show um, I hope you guys took as much out of it as I did because I'm, I'm leaving with so much new info and it's just yeah. always beautiful to get to talk to you guys so thank you again so much for joining no it was lovely thank you that's wonderful lovely. thank you guys and happy christmas and to all our viewers sorry i always say happy christmas that's very english but yeah. happy holidays merry christmas if you're not celebrating like me just have a blast whatever you're doing so i want to say that guys just enjoy yeah oh i think my ring light just died so that's the perfect, <laughs> that's the perfect way to go out thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will talk to you next week on another right. of the FNL Network talk show. Bye.